today we're going to be sitting over with Dr. Damien King, who is, I would say, a famous Caribbean economist based here in Jamaica. You're the executive director of CAPRI, the Caribbean Policy Research Institute. You've authored and co-authored a number of papers promoting the policy, including things related to, in my opinion, tax reform and a number of other things that apply to not just Jamaica, but developmental economics. Can you tell us a little bit about CAPRI before we dive into the discussion? Yes. Um, thank you, David. It's really a pleasure to be here. CAPRI arises from a realization, from articulating a realization that all of us have really had, that are old enough to reflect upon Jamaica's development. And it is that Jamaica has disappointed us developmentally. You know, we all had more optimism for what Jamaica was going to become, especially around independence in the 1960s. That there was a great deal, there was a feeling that Jamaica had a lot of economic potential. And when you look at the 50 odd years since independence, mostly what you see is a country that at best in many respects has stagnated and in some respects actually deteriorated. Now, given the advantages it seemed to have, you know, it had a decent educational system, it is in the middle of the busiest shipping lanes in the world, shipping lanes in the world, it's close to a big market, you know, no history of, you know, centuries old ethnic conflict. It's hard to, to, to explain this sort of performance. And, and we came to the appreciation that its policy making apparatus was weak. That the public bureaucracy did not have sufficient technical capacity to inform policy making and to give our political leaders the, the feasible options. And so we formed a think tank which was to assist with that problem. It was to provide knowledge and recommendations on public policy issues. And that's what we've done for a dozen years. Oh, well, and, and trust me, I've read them as many as possible. And I, I, I'm glad to see scholarly research being done and not just writing an article in the newspaper and, and having people who are what, what I consider armchair economists giving their own opinions. So yeah, I love that you bring up the stagnation or the underachievement of Jamaica. Jamaica, as most of us know, we talk about our outsized impact on the world, whether it's reggae music and our contribution there, or we're going to talk about track and field. But somehow, we have not measured up to the, the growth around the globe, and definitely not within emerging economies. You touch on that stagnation and the shipping lanes and our location to a, a closed market. And a lot of us grew up thinking about Singapore. We look at Israel, if you read the book Startup Nation, they've had some amazing growth. And they're even emerging economies in Latin America. What are some of the reasons you think Jamaica hasn't done, done as well? Well, it's clear that along the way, we made some significant policy errors. And so, because of that, and because we consistently made policy errors, we were not able to leverage the advantage and the resources that the country was blessed with. So, do you think part of that reason for making those policy errors is is that resource curse that we hear about when you look at especially african countries jamaica has a lot of land and so we we kind of waste it or that's not necessarily part of the reason i mean that may very well have been a part of it you know it is significant that the poster child for economic development in the last half century singapore has no resources right you know not even not even water you can't find a river <laughs> And therefore, if there is going to be any consumption in Singapore, if there is going to be any government revenue, it has to be out of created wealth. Right. So not having resources tends to sharpen the focus and to punish a bad policy environment. So when we look at those countries that have had outside success, I know we can just copy and paste from Singapore, or Israel, or Chile, and stick it into Jamaica. We have to have local context, but they all seem to have invested in education as a major thing. India is a really good example of that. China, no. We have to have a, a healthy population that goes to work. I think healthcare is something that we need to look at. 
and then we, we then they need security. The population needs to be secure, and that includes transportation. It seems though that all those things help them with productivity. And every time I've read about Jamaica and our or economic growth, whether it's stagnant or no, we have record numbers, which record is 1.4 percent, that's not five and ten. Mm -hmm. What are some of those issues? Are we putting in the effort to invest in the health, security, and education? Am I correct to think that those are key foundations, or is there something else that we that I am missing? I mean, the issue of how to get economic growth <coughs> and how to sustain it is is elusive. And, and not subject to a simple formula. Because if it were, then all countries would go rapidly and become wealthy. But there are some things that we do know, and you've mentioned some of them. You need to invest in the productive capacity of the country. That's the starting point. It may not be a sufficient condition, that's debatable, but it is certainly a necessary condition. And that productive capacity has to do with First and foremost, education. You need to have a population with a good foundation of education that creates not only the ability to be productive, but the ability to be adaptable as new technologies come along. You need to invest in the health of the population. A healthy population allows the members of the population to invest in themselves. You need to invest in the economic infrastructure. That means you have a good road network for the transportation of people and the transportation of cargo. It's interesting that Jamaica so underinvested in infrastructure in the post-independence period that all of the traffic between the capital city and the north coast came down at one point to a, to a bridge consisting of one lane, not one lane in each direction, you know, one yeah, lane yeah. for both directions at the flat bridge. That was built 300 years ago for horses. Yeah. And when the obvious infrastructural bottleneck became apparent many years ago, the solution was a traffic light. <laughs> the solution was, well, something you have to wait. It took us 300 years to build a north-south highway to break that bottleneck. So we're vastly under-investing in, under in the economic in 